it's, it's 100 degrees and we're burning up, but when we started hunting and seeing the animals and the, you know, we're hunting, we're hunting where the big boys are and to see the Cape Buffalo and the hippo and uh, the elephants, it was, um, it was intense. They're heading kind of into the wind. So I don't know if they want to circle back to that water or whatever, but I, it's too far for me to really see if it's anything to shoot or not. So I think we just walk in maybe to close enough distance where we can kind of make a call. And okay. So I'll never hippo hunted before. I'm a little bit nervous, but I cannot wait to see how it works. Now, most people think that hippo hunting is easy, but it's not. If they see you, they go under. And when they come up, all that's sticking up is their little nose and their eyes. And there's only two spots that you can shoot a hippo to make a good, clean kill. Let's just say, when it was my turn, I missed. And I thought she made a perfect shot that bullet hit the water and skipped, and that hippo got away. Proudly sponsored by Spot Hog, the world's toughest archery products, Executive Outdoor Adventures, Pinnacle Hunting Supplies, the best of the West shooting system, featuring the Huskama Advantage, Traeger Wood Pellet Grills. We are looking for hippos that apparently we we're here and are not here now. Another, there's another pond we can quickly go check out. Let's go. Well, hippo, they're the most dangerous animal that these villagers encounter at the water. There's more deaths caused by hippos than any other mammal that's there. And the other part about them is they get into these water holes and they just, if they're overpopulated, they just devastate it. They're detrimental to the environment, they're detrimental to other species, and they're very dangerous for villagers when they have to go get water at their water source. These villagers depend on hunters to provide meat for each of these villages. They're not allowed to hunt. So when we harvest something, we have a, just a little bit of time. We take all that meat or they come and get it. So we're providing protein and a food source for all these different villages. And so it's not just out trophy hunting. We're doing part conservation, part for the villagers, and the other part's just for fun. We brought my 375 from Best of the West. It's a precision rifle. And I tell you what, for a 5,000, 6,000 pound animal, this is a tough hunt. They get down to the water, all you can see is nostrils and eyeball every now and then, and there's a little spot about this big, and you've got to make the perfect shot. Oh. 
with the name. Oh. Does that feel better there, John? Yeah, I'm good. Good. You want to try it? Yeah. yeah. He's right, right of it. Just popped up. Yeah, that's the one we want to know. Look at all this stuff, all this stuff on it. On him. Dad gum rock solid. No, I missed I missed. The nice thing is we'll come back early tomorrow morning to come pull him out. Okay. And hopefully by that time the other hippos would have gone. Yeah. It's, it's cool enough here and it's in the water so the meat will be perfect. I mean it's gonna take a couple of days for a dead hippo in the water where it actually gets to a point where the crocs can start getting meat off. Yeah. Could you see it or did the, the muzzle break? No, yeah. this, this muzzle break kicks up a lot of dust. Uh, <laughs> when you hunt hippo in the water, when you make the shot, they sink. And you wait and the gases and everything in them, they float to the top and then you go retrieve them. So we make a shot a little bit later in the afternoon and you don't know what happened. It felt good, it looked good on camera, but we don't see a hippo. It's getting dark, and this is probably the only water in the area, so we're going to see lions, elephants, and you don't want to be in the dark with them. You guys are the first group for the year. It's been a very, very tough year. Um, I mean, everyone has reserves, but usually not longer than six to eight months, so this year got tough. Um, yeah, with this whole lockdown situation, it's been bad. Um, I mean, we haven't been able to come into the areas. We've heard that there's been a lot of poaching going on, obviously, because the hunters weren't on the ground. Um, they weren't being meat being provided to the local villagers. So, of course, the guys are hungry and they're going to go out and poach. And um, it's just good to be back, to be back out here with, with great friends and doing what we love to do and um, conservation hunting. Yeah. So thanks a lot for being here, guys. We really appreciate it. And you always come through for us. So thank you. Proudly sponsored by Matthews. Wilderness Athlete. Fuel for the rugged Low T Center. Reinventing men's health. Mortgage Financial Services. Set your course toward home ownership. National Roper Supply. NRSWorld.com. Guru Ultra Light Hunting. One's got one horn. Oh my God. See him? He's running right there. So yeah, he does. I got him. He ran right into my film. Yeah, there he's on the right. There's a bunch of rams in that bunch. <laughs> Long night. We get up. We get out there. Check out the footage. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Isn't it? Not him floating? There's another one by him. Maybe not. Yeah. That's him, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's something in the water by him. Him's dead. The work begins with the exciting part about it, and this is <laughs> conservation. Martin's here. He's a game scout. My PH. We get that hippo out. We process the meat, and we're going to go feed some villagers. They had not had a lot of meat this year, so they're pretty excited. I saw some smiles in camp when they saw the hunters in town. And that's what people don't see unless you come over here. The people of this nation up here get fed right there, and I'm super excited. I'm so happy to have a chance, and 
honored to be here in Namibia getting to hunt. I don't care what time of year and how hard it was to get here, it was worth every second. <sighs> We're gonna get the vehicle with. The other side? Yeah. Oh, it's so close. It does this side. Oh, it's dry on that side, huh? It's so close over there. Good to see Pooh's line, yeah? Me too. <laughs> Me too. Um, so what we was probably going to have to do is get some brush out here, bring the vehicle in. If you can get some speed, you know, if the water is not too shallow, it sort of bounces on the water coming out. Okay. But if it's very, <laughs> if it's very shallow... <laughs> so much so for the story. The That's just <laughs> checking the wind. And apparently it's blowing this way. You have to walk out there. Yeah, you have to walk out there. I'm not going out there. I can't swim. I can't do it. The frickin' A. I didn't think he was gonna try that. Well, the adventure continues here at uh, <laughs> the Caprivi. We might have to get Jeff to that didn't look good. come pull us out. Hopefully the camera gear in the back seat is okay. Okay, I clip it off. You're thankful they're going in there, not me. <laughs> <laughs> amazing to be able to come hunt magnificent species like the hippo and look at the people how happy they are to get fed I got to hunt something on this earth that I never thought I would so I'm pretty grateful to these guys for giving me the opportunity pretty emotional it's pretty cool to see that So cool. You know, the year we've had, we didn't get to go anywhere. I talked to a group of guys into coming to Namibia, which is my favorite country to hunt by far. I've been here multiple times and have memories that I'll never forget. And a hippo hunt, to me, is just something I, I never thought I'd be able to do. And to have a chance at a big bull hippo, this hippo does so many things for me in this country. There's way too many hippo in the area. It's in big drought, so we're trying to help the population, but you saw that the people in Namibia benefit. Not only do they get money for conservation, but this hippo is gonna go feed a lot of people. So hunting has to exist 
for conservation to continue. And all the benefits of it and what this hippo provides is just unbelievable when you really think about how much provision an animal like this can make, but the joy of the hunt, the thrill of the hunt, and I tell you, as big as this animal is, it's a difficult shot, a tough hunt. You have to be precise, you have to be patient, and ace, he was good, he was good at all that. So, thanks again to Shapunga Kambako and the guys, they've got a lot more areas now. You guys have seen them on the show for years, and it's just getting better. My Letchway, like you said, we were crossing a kind of marshy area and Peter went all the way up to his hips in the mud, uh, which in the middle of a stalk was quite funny. And you know, you, you can laugh and all, but he shakes the mud off and we move on. And Shooting. Wake shooting. <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It looks like Caprivia now. No. Caprivia Maronite. It looks like a real Caprivia now. Hey. This was for what you do for your clients. Old, old buck. Beautiful. Huh? Yes, what a stick of that. Congratulations, man. It's... Thank you. And you didn't know this, but the red lechway is actually in Namibia. It's the only place you can wild uh, at all. Uh, Non-fenced, free-range, free range, the red lechwe hunters here. Oh wow! Yeah, so people that is species collectors, if they have a red lechwe on their list, um, the and they want to come to the Namibia to do it, they have to come here because the other ones don't count. We, we didn't pull tape on anything. My lechwe, I still say it was bigger, but uh, we'll have to wait till we get the horns back and we measure them. But uh, I'll do the measuring, and, and we'll figure out which lechwe was bigger. 